Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Words of Fire podcast. I am your host, Dion Sanchez, and joining me in this particular episode is Nina Bingham. Thank you for joining me today, Nina. Hi, Dion. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Awesome, Nina. So if you could share with my audience a bit about yourself, which is a vast spectrum of creativity um, to start us off, that would be great. Okay. So um, I was interested in your show because we have a lot in common. Um, Our backgrounds are are similar in that we have some uh, trauma um, that we overcame in our lives. And so that kind of attracted me to your show. Um, And maybe we'll, you know, touch on that in in this hour. But um, so I, uh, for 19 years, I was a life coach. um, uh, Although I'm a clinical mental health therapist. um, But I did sort of practice as a life coach and as a clinical hypnotherapist. So I helped people like, you know, lose weight and stop smoking and stuff like that. Um, and then I also did sound therapy, which is kind of interesting. Most people don't know about that. It's using tuning forks, you know, tuning fork that you hit and, you know, you same kind of tuning forks that you use on your guitar to tune it. Yeah. You use that actually on the body, kind of like, um, an acupuncturist uses needles, except you use the end of a tuning fork and, um, the frequency it, it vibrates very quickly. And the frequency goes through the body and it's very healing. So, um, yeah, so I did a little of that too. So I did that for 19 years and now I'm a full-time author and I've written 11 books and um, I just had a new one come out yesterday. So we'll talk about that today. And, uh, and I'm writing about angels at this point. So like you said, yes. <laughs> creativity, I've been all over the map. Yes, please. Um, that was probably one of the first things that um stru- striked me when you reached out in that email. Um, your connection with Archangels and mental health. If you could explain that connection and with my audience and myself, because I can't imagine what that connection would be like. The two. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So let let me see if I understand what you're saying. I, I think I do, but let me just see if I do. Okay. So it sounds like the question you're asking is what is it like to, to be in touch with archangels and what is it like to like channel these angels and things like that? Yes. And you also said it could connect with mental health as well. That yeah. connection with archangels. So I was- yeah, you know, what's interesting about that, Dion, is that um, there's been studies done about people who have intuitive abilities. And that's what we're talking about. Okay. You know, people who have ESP, extrasensory perception, or, you know, you can call me a psychic if you want to, although, psychic gets a bad rap. You know, a lot of people don't, don't trust psychics or whatever, but the interesting thing about, or mediums, the interesting thing about having extrasensory perception or intuition, which I believe everybody has a little of, um, is that studies have been done to show that people who have heightened intuition, like I do, who are, you know, can, can hear, like I have the, the gift of clear audience, which means clear hearing. Now I don't see angels, but okay. I can hear them clearly. Okay. So um, people who have heightened senses like this oftentimes have um, mental illness diagnosis. Like, you know, they could be bipolar or they could have depression. In fact, a lot of authors have depression, interestingly enough. And I do suffer from depression and I take meds for it. So, um, yeah, there's been a lot of studies done about creative people to show that, and and we don't quite understand why in the brain that it happens that way, but there's something, uh, there's a connection, um, a correlation between, you know, having certain mental health diagnoses and then, and then a heightened intuition or a heightened uh, uh, sense, extrasensory sense. Uh, Um, (laughs) <laughs> Nina um I get the extra can you repeat that last part about the sensory sense because my computer decided to go cuckoo just now yeah <laughs> um so what the studies show is that people often who you know suffer from anxiety or depression or even things like bipolar disorder tend to be more creative people and the people who are more creative are often um more intuitive 
Okay. And, and by intuitive, I'm talking about using a certain part of our brain. So we have two halves, right. Of the right. brain that look like two walnut halves. Yeah. And so it's the right side of our brain. That's the more creative side that is in charge of the, um, unconscious mind. You've heard that, you know, yes. the subconscious feel, mind. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, and as a hypnotherapist, that's what I was dealing with, with people is working with their subconscious thoughts and feelings and bringing those up to the surface so they can be healed. So um, there is a correlation between, you know, having creativity, um, people who have uh, depression, bipolar, anxiety, and, um, and heightened intuition. So yeah, and, and I do suffer from, you know, I have a, a diagnosis that kind of is runs throughout my family of uh, depression, you know, I take meds for it, and I'm a happy camper, as long as I take my meds. But um, yeah, there is a big correlation there. So I, I can't say if that's the reason that I got picked for this job, you know, because I have that certain thing in my brain that allows me to tune in. Um, you know, in fact, when I asked, uh, the, the first angel that came to me, it was Archangel Metatron. And I can explain a little bit about who he is if you're not familiar. But when I asked him oh, why, good. yeah, like, wh why me? You know, why me? Why did you pick a mental health counselor, for goodness sakes? You know, and, and, and what all he said was your open heart. That was his, because of your open heart. You know, you have an open heart. And, you know, for angels, it's really not about your education. They, yeah. they really don't care about that or they really don't don't aren't impressed with things like that what they really care about is that you your heart is open to things like this and that you're willing to keep an open mind i think i truly am I, and i've only heard the term angel metatron once but i don't it may not have been in the right context because it was a show on netflix called supernatural and from where they described it metatron um, was like the writer or angel for the Bible and connection to God. I don't know if that's specifically right. People who are <laughs> really big on facts, please do not criticize me for this because I don't know if that's true or not. But maybe you could shed some light on that particular angel because I didn't. I didn't know that was an actual angel. To be honest, I just thought it was a name they just put in a TV show. I know yeah. God's obviously in existence and there's several other names for angels, but I didn't know much about Metatron. Yeah. So Metatron is an archangel in, um, in the Jewish Kabbalah, which is the sort of sacred writings of the Jewish people. So he's named in the Jewish Kabbalah. Um, he's named in some, some Christian writings. Um, uh, he's not actually his name is not in the Bible. They only included three archangels in the Bible. Okay. Actually they included four, uh, but three that you hear about, which is Michael, Gabriel, and um, who am I forgetting? Raphael. Yeah. So those are the ones you usually hear about. But Metatron um, is, interestingly enough, he's called the recording angel. So you were saying that you heard that he does some writing or something like yeah. that? Yeah. Yes. Um, yes, he does. So he's called a recording angel because he's the one that's in charge of the Bible calls it the book of life, Dion. Maybe you've heard about that. Yes. Um, other people in the new age movement, they've given it a new name and they call it the Akashic record. So maybe you've heard about that. I don't believe I have. Huh. Yeah. That's so it's of sort that. of the same thing, but um, that's what he's in charge of is sort of writing down everybody's life and all their deeds. And, and keeping track of all that, <laughs> how it keeps track of all that, I have no idea. Um, and, and that's what he keeps track of. And he's um, sort of the heavenly scribe. So he's the one often that comes and does give, um, he speaks very often with humanity, because that's his job is he comes to writers. So I'm a writer. So it kind of makes sense that he would be the first one to come. Wow. Oh. Maybe TV did get it sort of right for once a little mm -hmm. bit because yeah. he was a writer of events and seemed to be just tied down to earth and humanity um, from what I've watched. Of course, Supernatural is about a bunch of other stuff that isn't necessarily right, but um, wow, that's really fascinating. Um, so you've encountered Metatron, who is an archangel. Is there any other archangels or was Metatron specifically the first one you've encountered in I, I don't know how, how I don't want to like mix up the facts here I'm sure you've had many like, encounters since Metatron 
or do the same archangels revisit you or how does that work? Yeah. So um, the first book I wrote is called Messages from Metatron. It's a, a course. It's a curriculum. Actually, it's a course in self-transformation. So it's um, 30 messages from Metatron and then a study guide that has 30 lessons, okay, in one book. And that's messages from Metatron. And so it took me three years to write that, uh, 30 different messages and lessons. Um, He didn't give me the lessons. I wrote those by myself so that people could study it and apply it to their lives. And now I've got actually a podcast called the Messages from Metatron study group podcast that we just started yeah on seaview awesome. uh, quantum network so that's um, for anybody who might be interested in that you can find uh, messages from metatron on amazon.com if you want to check it out but um on seaview quantum network we're a podcast and we broadcast the third wednesday of every month so just once a month and we'll study one lesson a month Right now, I like this um, on March 18th is our next one. And we're going to be studying the third lesson in the book. So uh, the, the, the first book took three years to write. Okay. And then I was visited by 10 archangels after that. So he told me after he'd given me this huge book, it's about this thick. He said, okay, now, you know, basically uh, prepare yourself <laughs> because I'm going to send 10 different archangels to you. And I was like, I think I said, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Because just one was a mind blower. So yeah. And so that's the book that was published actually yesterday. And and the name of that book yeah, is 10 Archangels Teach You How to Live an Inspired Life. Um, And it's just 10 messages from these 10 different archangels. Um, And it includes the ones that we're real familiar with, which is Archangel uh, Raphael, who's the healing archangel. He's like heaven's physician. Um, and then Archangel Gabriel. Gabriel's the one that you always see blowing the trumpet. Yeah. And he's, yeah, he's the Archangel of Revelation and Communication. And then, um, uh, who am I forgetting? Uh, Raphael and um, Michael. Oh gosh, who, or maybe that Michael. Hello, St. Michael. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Archangel St. Michael. Oh, how could you forget him? he's he's a superstar so it's it's him yes and then also you know um however many angels that leaves us with seven different other angels that you might not be familiar with but most people are familiar with those three because they're in the bible right but wow i just i truly admire you for just your vast experience and intuitive nature and to be able to feel or i sense angels i mean i'm sure all of us have wanted to connect with them on some deep spiritual level and as you mentioned i'm sure we do have the capacity for it but we could also be very resistant to what we're not familiar with yes absolutely and i gotta say that uh, although i appreciate you saying you know you you um, admire that i was open you know to hearing from them honestly the first time that metatron visited me i wanted nothing to do with it Beyond. Okay. I, I was like, I know, you know, like, no. <laughs> like, okay, okay. No. That would be a normal response. Yeah, I just was not excited at all. And, um, and be, he basically just had to sit on me and say, look, lady, I need your help. And I'm not going away until you say yes. It almost felt like a, a wrestling match of wills, you know, like a test of wills. Um, and, and, you know, I wasn't very nice about it at first because, um, I was, you know, had a full-time, uh, mental health practice and I was like, you know, how do I, how do you go from being a mental health therapist? Okay. To (laughs) channeling angels. It's crazy. It's like, and I don't want to be perceived that way. You know, I, I invested all this time and all this money going to school so that I could be a professional and, and to be perceived as a psychic. It, it was just like, not even in my, um, uh, not even something that I could wrap my head around. Um, but, you know, he grew on me, honestly. And, and he just started giving me these messages. And it was like, they started touching my heart and they started changing me. And they started changing my life and the way 
I saw myself and the way I felt like more loved by God and the way I felt like closer to God and, um, and how I started loving other people in the world. Like it started changing me personally. When that started happening, then my heart started softening and I was like, oh, okay. It started to become really hard to say no to that. Right. Because angels are all about love. Absolutely. They're just all about love. They're gushy. They just, they love us incredibly and to be in their presence you're just you're just enveloped you know in love you're like a fountain of love so kind of hard to say no to that right so i am curious and i um we are in the pandemic season which has been two years um Mm -hmm. um have you experienced any encounters or signs if you will to how to cope with that um, during this season with the virus and the isolation and the quarantine, um, mm-hmm. obviously some things are, I don't know where, it, how it is for you, where you live, but things are somewhat coming to a regular type of normal here. Yeah. Um, but um, because the mask mandates have been a bit lifted over here, but obviously we're, mm-hmm. it, we're still in the season, uh, it, no matter where we are. So have you had any archangel encounters or any Mm -hmm. sign to how to deal or cope with what's going on right now yeah that's a good question I like that question a lot um yeah I because I have a heart condition and so I'm in that um you know the the group of people that are are sort of um you know you have to be really extra careful um about getting COVID yeah I'm in that category because I'm I'm older category as well yeah so COVID really shut my life down you know, as I think it did a lot of people. And I had a practice um, two years ago when it hit and I had to close the practice because I couldn't be in close contact with people, you know, sitting in a closed room yeah. with, with clients anymore. Um, so yeah, it, 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 like everybody else, it hugely impacted my life. I think the message I got though from the angels about it was, and this was Metatron specifically, he talks in his book about meditation. And he says, basically, that we here on earth, human beings are taught to look out to the world for our satisfaction, for our enjoyment, for our entertainment, for our connection, right? We go outside of ourselves uh, for all that stuff. And, you know, COVID really put this huge wall around everybody. And so it made us, it forced us to be with ourselves, didn't it? Yeah. Uh, whether we liked it or not. And, and if you live with somebody, it also forced you together. Yeah. And interestingly enough, divorces shot up uh, pretty significantly because of this. So um, when we're forced into situations of isolation, um, you know, he says in his book, what, what you need to do is start looking within for satisfaction and for happiness that we, we tend to look out to the world to meet our needs, but that there's this like fountain inside, there's life inside, okay, that can come from us almost like because I live in a desert, I live in Arizona. And so uh, I've only lived here two years, but I'm starting to learn to love the desert. When I first got here, I was like, who likes this place? Like, why would you like it except for the sun is wonderful. But, but now I understand the desert because you have like, all these, you know, cactus that has these spines and stuff. But they keep the animals alive because they've got all this, you know, like um, they're filled with uh, fluid. Okay. Those those cactus. Yeah. But, but to look at, but to look at it, it looks like dry, like who could live here. And yet it, it hosts this incredible, you know, incredible uh, wildlife. Okay. Because there is life even in a desert. And so that's kind of what I found myself feeling like, like I'm in this desert, you know, emotionally I'm here by myself. I'm locked in. So where do you find that water, you know, and what he's saying is that we've all got this water inside of us, and that we have to dive down inside of ourselves to find that water instead of looking out when we can't get to the water, that there's something inside of us that will come up for us and give us life and give us that happiness that we're looking for. Absolutely. Um, And I think you may already be familiar with this because you did research on me which I'm not used to um so um for me as far as my experience with the pandemic um 
Um, first off, my heart goes out to anyone who's been affected by it. I know it's still going on. Um, you're not alone in feeling what you are feeling in regards to this. Um, for me, I my experience was a bit different because I ended up getting diagnosed with diabetes at the start of the pandemic, mm. 2020. Um, I believe it's type one. We never fully figured out specific because it was still news and all pandemic and I am diabetic now. This is my life now. Um, we didn't really think to figure out precisely at that moment in time what specific type it was. Um, we had to get a diabetes doctor and then other doctors and all types of doctors mm -hmm. because this is a part of my life now. So um, obviously we're in this pandemic for two years. I've been diagnosed with diabetic for two years. Um, hey, I survived being diabetic in this season somehow. So that's a blessing already. Um, but we've been treating it as type one. So in regards to my experience with COVID, um, I, first off, I don't drive. So I didn't really have the luxury of being social um, or taking that risk. And even if I did have that capability, which I'm sure I do, but I'm part of that statistical factor that if I were to get it, then I'm super, super screwed as far as surviving it um, because I'm diabetic and I also had low immune system ever since I was a kid. So I'm just part of that fortunate bunch that has to stay away from people super, super hard. Um, so I was quarantined and isolated. Um, my dad worked at normally and I didn't have a job <laughs> at that point. So I did schooling online and it, I think if anything, I had to learn how to be diabetic, um, which was a new ch health change for me. And my family didn't take kindly to the fact that this was happening to me. They took it probably a lot harder than I did because um, for the first two years of my life, just give you a little insight into me, I couldn't hear her talk for, for my life for the first two years. Yes. So um, that <laughs> I had to go through all of that, growing up issues, proving myself that I'm intelligent, getting accepted getting acceptance and just just overcoming every single second of air I breathed mm -hmm. so the fact that in my adulthood things was somewhat normal I don't think adulthood is ever supposed to be easy but it was <laughs> um at least my interests growing up from day one didn't put a damper into me adapting into my adulthood as much but to um be diagnosed with diabetes now my family were not thrilled like she's already gone through so much her adulthood seemed to be somewhat normal and now she has to deal with this I'm like this isn't fair um but I took it as a blessing in disguise because the alternative is simply not being here and right. it was really through my diagnosis that I looked more within myself in a way as far as health what health choices and making right choices going to the gym eating the right foods and mm -hmm. leaning into the calling god called on me in my heart which is to be a warrior for change um mm -hmm. to be more vocal than i ever have been mm -hmm. um, the only experience i ever had is with spoken word videos um which actually started that september 2019 so it's ironic how that little because i had never done spoken word videos i tried it once but was resistant because I just, my gift, I wasn't open to sharing that with anyone really. Um, it was a wonderful gift I'm blessed with. I have a way with words. After all, it's called words of heart for a reason. So I obviously am adapt with words, but I just didn't think it was some, my gift that was important to share. I mean, it's a different part of my personality that dives deep into sensuality and spirituality and all these facets of me that some people might find shocking if they were to read it because it's different than who you know as Dion but it's still mm -hmm. part of me so I didn't make it a point to share that um but of course I eventually had the courage like oh this is my talent I'm gonna own it God gave it to me who cares what you think so mm -hmm. I started doing videos and then mm -hmm. that November I got sick and my life took a turn for the worse and mm -hmm. Fast forward to August 23rd, 2020, I launched my podcast, which would be two years old coming up this August. So congratulations. Thank you. So 
and I don't lose track of where we, where I was going with this conversation. Um, but, well, it sounds like it. You know, the the pandemic but, really yeah. made you dig inside for that strength. Yes. Um. It. Yeah, right. I was explaining COVID and diabetic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's where I was going on with that trike. Yeah, I had to look deep within myself as far as, um, what I had to do with my life because I had another chance to live my life. Um. Mm -hmm. And I wanted it to have purpose. I wanted to have meaning, more meaning, if you will. And I wanted to use my voice for good. Um, mm -hmm. And I love that God sort of led me to podcasting and that respect. Mm -hmm. Well, first he laid the word warrior on my heart. I didn't know what he wanted me to do with that yet. And then I was, of course, things in Florida in March got shut down. I mm -hmm. took the news of being diabetic completely on my own. I didn't discuss it. I didn't even pick up Facebook status, which is so unlike me, but I just took this news solely alone. It was a blessing, yes, but it was still a huge change that I had to adjust to. Um, probably one person in my life who was diabetic was my best friend, so she was a big support system in that, but she's also a mother and has a son, so I can't really rely on her 25-7. Um, so I had to adjust to this on my own. And then in March, I was, I didn't feel like a freak anymore. I was still Dion. I could go out. So I went out once and then everything got <laughs> shut down the following week here in Florida. <laughs> so I'm like, damn, um, what am I going to do? I don't want to resort to old patterns of feeling alone and rejected when I was younger and considering suicide because that was a likely scenario when I was younger. But now, thanks to Zoom, I was fortunate enough to connect with a young adult ministry here in Florida called My Local and connect with them and adjust to being diabetic still, but also have that community and acceptance that I so desperately needed. And they were telling me, hey, Dion, what you say matters is inspiring and you, you, you matter, like we care about you. And I find it mind blowing that they said I was inspiring because mm -hmm. it is through a computer screen such as this here and they never even met me in a physical capacity. So how can I be inspiring through a screen? <laughs> to this day, I still find that mind blowing, but um, it was good. It happens. <laughs> I guess it was God's way of introducing me to a platform that I had yet knew about and that's obviously podcasting. Um, so mm -hmm. I listened to what my friends were telling me and to what God was calling me to do that um, summer. I asked God, use me however you want to use me. I was crying, for, for lifting up my hands. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to be silent when it comes to things that matter. So mm -hmm. obviously in that August <laughs> 2020, I, on 23rd, I launched my podcast. And I'm just very fortunate for this platform mm -hmm. to come at a time when it did. Um, mm -hmm. and the fact that I had the capability to create it really, I didn't have to go to school in person. I had the luxury of technology to do it online. And I also didn't have a job at that point. So I really had all the t luxury in the world to make it as much as I wanted to. And not just to amplify my voice, which was really the initial idea in the beginning, but it's has turned and evolved into so much more and just sharing other people's stories and amplifying their voices such as yours mm -hmm. and just that our stories have the power to help someone and to save someone's life so mm -hmm. so you know what i hear you saying is that through all of this um you just got stronger and stronger and stronger and yeah. i think that's what adversity can do for us if we allow it to i mean it can also make us bitter. It can also make us angry. It can make us all those negative things, but we have a choice, you know, uh, adversity is going to come. Like you said, that's what life's about. So it's, it's how we choose to, to deal with it. And, you know, like I was saying earlier, having that open heart, yeah. you know, you said, I think you said uh, a few minutes ago, a few seconds ago that you just like, you surrendered, you didn't say that word, but that's kind of what I heard. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, I, 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 yeah, I, I did surrender. That's the, probably the best um, word as far as just letting my heart, let God do whatever it wants to do and not let my stress or insecurities get in the way. Just let God take my heart and do whatever he, whatever he wants with it. But um, yes, overcoming an adversity is something I know very, very well. 
um, growing up. Um, many people, I mean, it wasn't really until I got into podcasting, I understand the real depths of my own story. Like me not being able to hear or talk for the first two years of life, struggling with mental health is at the start of three years old. I didn't make that a point to discuss with anyone. I didn't think it was relevant or part of my story that was worth sharing. But through podcasting, I understand it is important to share. It's a part of me. It's basically my birth story. Mm-hmm. And also why my family called me a miracle child. Because, hey, I ended up learning to hear and talk and mm-hmm. overcome so much as a result of that. So um, adversity and just handling life's challenges is something I'm very well adapt to and my life has never been easy and I don't think it's a post I don't think it's destined to be easy um Mm -hmm. when I think about Mm -hmm. it because I've faced a lot and I continue to face a lot and Mm -hmm. um I'm just really fortunate to be to be able to meet people such as yourself and just Mm -hmm. open this platform to everybody who needs it well, so interesting that it sounds like, you know, your, your plans kind of got squashed, you know, in a lot of ways. <laughs> and mine did too. Like, you know, I had just opened up this, this beautiful office and I was, you know, advertising and seeing these wonderful new clients and things were on a roll and, and all of a sudden, you know, COVID hit and I had to shut everything down. Um, you know, all of my plans just kind of caved in and yeah. when, when our plan, our own plans cave in sometimes, afterwards you look back and you go wow I'm kind of actually glad that that happened I mean at the time you're not glad that that happened right and you're really upset that it it did but you look back later on your life I've so many times I've looked back and I go wow I'm I'm like really glad that happened you know Um, because you can't see into the future but I think the folks on the other side can and so sometimes our plans get kiboshed and then um and then they kind of slip their plans in there somehow. Yes, my plans definitely took a twist of events in 2019. And the thing is, when I got sick, um, again, it was probably the most depressing, darkest period of my life. I don't think I've ever experienced so much sadness in my lifetime. Um, and I'm sure I will at some point, but that was like the pinnacle of sadness and darkness in my life. My faith was shaken, my mental health was shaken. I was basically a skeleton. I had bones. I was bones. I had no flesh, no meat, anything. The smile you see before you was non-existent. And that's never happened or occurred. I'm smiling all the time. There was no smile. I was just so unbelievably broken. I even like wrote a poem Mm -hmm. about my experience with that um, Mm -hmm. called broken, literally. Um, It was just such a difficult time. And I was in school the final semester of college, a final term of the fall term, which is a do or die situation in a metaphorical sense because you could either make it or not. So I was in a good standing with my classes. I was taking two, had to retake another one. I was understanding what I was studying finally. Mm. And then I got sick and and I just turned 24, birthdays, Thanksgiving, all new age, everything you're supposed to be happy about, I wasn't happy about because I could have died. <laughs> so um, yes, plans definitely took an unexpected hit, but um, it's I'm so fortunate and blessed that God answered my prayers when he did, because I wasn't sure that was going to happen, or if he did, I was going to be around to hear it. I may be up in heaven talking to him right now by the time I heard his answer but um yes plans definitely decided to interrupt my life not plans I anticipated but I'm all the more grateful for it because I had a chance to continue living my life also I it's funny because my phone just reminded me of our meeting which we're doing right now obviously (laughs) um somehow miraculously while I was sick keeping in mind I missed probably a lot of classes I couldn't afford to miss but I didn't take any sick days that semester so I was afforded some Mm -hmm. um I somehow managed to pass my classes while I was on the cusp of not existing anymore so Mm -hmm. I do find that to be pretty awesome and a little separate miracle in itself because I worked very very hard throughout my academics and just 
I mean, obviously my health is far more important, but the idea of failing, I just didn't want that to even be something to be mm -hmm. put into existence. So mm -hmm. <sighs> I've talked wow. a lot. <laughs> it's, it's been an eventful couple of years, hasn't it? <laughs> yes. Yeah, for everybody, I think. Yeah, but you know, we've all learned and we've grown from it. I mean, I've, I've got people that I talk to all the time and they're like, you know, it was the worst thing. It was the worst of times. It was the best of times, you know, because they grew and that's what happens uh, with opposition is that we grow through it. So there's, yeah, there's the, there's the down, but there's also an upside to it. Um, yeah. Absolutely. So I'm going to get to the icebreaker segment, which is my favorite part because it's so okay. much fun and it makes me laugh a lot. <laughs> so um, I'll start with the icebreaker question because that's really simple and I'm pretty sure you're going to nail it because you're an author. If you had to come up with a title or chapter for where your life is at at this precise moment in time, mm. what would it be? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, well, I'm excited about because I've I've written uh, one, two, three new books that are coming out this year. So the first one came out yesterday, and then I've got another couple that are coming out. So um, I don't know. I just feel like really prolific right now. Like I'm writing a lot, and I'm I'm channeling another book. Um, so they're just like coming as fast as I can turn them out. Right. Um, and that feels really good because I, I feel like, like you were saying, I'm fulfilling, you know, I'm, I'm giving something, I'm, I'm, I'm giving something back, you know, even if it's just a, a little thing, a little book, I'm putting something out there into the universe that's positive, you know? Um, so if I had to make a... <laughs> I'm sure you weren't anticipating know. that. I thought you would have known, but were aware of the question. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that, I'll have to think about that. I don't know. I'm sure I could come up with a creative title if I thought about it long enough. But um, I mean, I can go back to know. the old icebreaker question. I I mean, okay. This, um, the old icebreaker question, which I don't ask that often anymore because it was for the last season. Um, it was, I think it was, if you had to have a superpower, um, what would it be? And it can oh, be I a can... power you already possess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I would, the first thing that pops to mind is that because I have clear audience, I can, I can hear the other side. Um, the first thing that pops to mind is that I might want to like, see the other side, like be able to see angels on, on occasion, but then I don't want that because I think it would scare me. <laughs> I think it would absolutely terrify me if I could see them because I don't think that, it, well, I know, uh, through research, the angels are not the chubby little cherubs that we see depicted in art. That's not really what they're lo look like. Okay. They're yeah. actually quite awesome beings with a lot of power. So I don't know necessarily that I'd want them showing up, you know, in my bathroom or my living room or something like that. Um, so I guess I, I mean, there's part of me that would like, like to see them on occasion, I guess, you know. Um, so I guess if I could turn that on or off, you know, if I had had the okay. power to see them on occasion, that's what I would like. Awesome. That's what I'd enjoy. So um, I'll share my <laughs> title or chapter um, since I was sharing yeah. a single episode and that would be a warrior for change. Um, God mm -hmm. placed that word warrior on my heart for a reason. It's on all of my social media platforms in my bio, warrior for change, warrior for change. I just feel like that's my mantra, my vision and what inevitably led me to start my podcast to begin with and plus everything I've experienced and faced, which is a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's not all candies and rainbows. It wasn't really easy. Um, so being a warrior really symbolizes who I am, what I've gone through, and what I will continue to go through from now to my life moving forward. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. That's beautiful. And, you know, you're probably, it's those people who have that open heart, like we're saying, you know, that can be used, Dion. Um, 
it's like when we're, you know, I call myself a channeler and that's such an apt um, word for what I do, because if you think about it, a channel is something that water flows through. Okay. Right. Um, all I am is a straw. That's all I, I'm just the straw. Okay. And, and they kind of put their words and their energy into the universe, you know, through me. And I'm just, I'm just describe and write it down. But um, all of us though, have the ability to channel something you know, and for you, you're channeling change into the universe. Yeah. You know, f- for me, in a way, I'm channeling miracles, because what I do is yeah. kind of a miracle. It's so, incredible. yeah, it's pretty amazing. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, for me, it, like this last half of my life has become like the birth of miracles for me, because I've, I'm seeing some amazing things and doing amazing things that I never in a million years saw myself doing so yeah we can all but we all can be that channel we just are we're all going to contribute something different you know and no gift is any greater than you know your gift is not greater than mine and mine's not greater than yours we ever we all need but we all need to be contributing right now because man our universe our world needs it we need all the positive energy that we can put it so yeah (laughs) absolutely I think I did an episode like a while back I don't it was either for the last I think it was for the first season to be honest that we all have our gifts and our purposes in this world and we need to share them we don't need to hide it or Mm -hmm. keep it to ourselves because Mm -hmm. it has the power to help someone and that's and you know what I'm going to say something about that too is that so so I went to school I've got three academic degrees right two in psychology one in mental health and I went to school thinking that, that my big life's work would be working with clients. And, you know, for 18 years, that's a long time. That's what I did. And I made a significant, you know, contribution to people's lives in coaching them. But I never saw this last half of my life being like this. Okay. Right. Um, so what I want to say about that is if I wasn't willing to be seen as different if I wasn't willing to be seen as weird and and kind of out there and kind of woo woo um if if I would have just said no absolutely not you know I've spent all this money and gotten all these degrees and and this is my identity and I'm not going to change who I am and I'm not going to go out on a limb and people are going to call me crazy so forget it if I had done that I mean I've I've I have books, you know, all when, when all is said and done through channeling, those books would have never come into the world, you know, and they're touching people's lives. So um, I would say uh, for anybody listening tonight, it, if you're being challenged in your life to step and be something that nobody has ever seen before, or something that's really different and that people are gonna you're wondering you know what are people gonna say are they gonna like me are they gonna ridicule me what makes you special and different is actually what's marketable about you you know the reason i'm on your show tonight and that you were interested in talking to me is i'm a lady who hears angels and who talks to archangels that's really weird but it's also very marketable because it's it's different right and and human beings love to hear about things that are different and unusual so as long as you're willing to be different and unusual then you can be used to do amazing things in this world but it it truly takes that willingness and i think wow that's we got a theme for tonight (laughs) is you know just the willingness to be different you know the willingness to stand out and be odd the odd duck absolutely i totally stand by that mentality as far as being odd and different I was odd from the second I entered this world and I haven't (laughs) stopped being odd and I just we all have our differences and that's what makes us special and unique and remarkable in our own special way we all have and I'm sure this has been mentioned at some point this DNA that's encoded that's different or has one thing that's different than every other DNA and that's because it's supposed to be different we're not designed to be normal i hate to break that to you guys but we're not supposed to be normal (laughs) Mm -hmm. well if you think about it we're the only species who are fingertips uh our our, uh, fingerprints uh the iris of our eye our voice everything about us is unique 
you know, and, and if you look at the animal kingdom, they all kind of you know, think of a duck. Ducks pretty much look like ducks, you know, it's like, but yeah. we're all so different. We're different, different, you know, our skin is different shades. Our eyes are different colors. Our personalities are different. We're all so unique. So it's just the willingness to, 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 to be something that maybe the world hasn't seen before. Like maybe the world hasn't seen what you have to give yet. And, and it takes a heck of a lot of courage, right? It takes some bravery to step out and be something that no one's really seen before. But, but if you're willing to do it, you know, I think doors will start opening for people for you. So, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I would like to get to our icebreaker game because it's been a second. Um, but I'm loving this conversation, obviously, or else I would have waited up until this point to bring it up. Um, so the icebreaker game um, is really fun. I'm laughing because many people probably don't get inside scoop into this beforehand because I do that on purpose because it's supposed to be fun and spontaneous in a way. So okay. the game is called Song Association. Okay. You don't have to be an avid singer. You could be a yodeler or a whistler or a shower singer. If you could yodel any of these words, my listeners, I'm still <laughs> waiting for someone to yodel these you words. You want me to yodel? You don't have to. No, you don't have to. I'm just offering it as a suggestion <laughs> because there's many vocal- but That's vocals. different. <laughs> There's many vocal capabilities. There's yodeling. You can- That's hilarious. A shower singer. Um, What's another vocal capability that I'm- uh, Opera. Opera. There's, the, there's a vocal <laughs> capability there. Opera, okay. it, yodel it. Um, but here's how it works. Um, I give you a word and you can either channel it, sing it, rap it, however you choose to sing it. It has to be in the lyrics or in the title. Um, I might okay. change that last part because my last guest did mention the title, but he didn't sing it. So um, I don't know if that really counts, but um, um, it has to be an actual song. It can't be a made up song or you can't take an actual song and replace it with the words I give you. Many okay. people have changed up this game, which is fun. It's all fun and giggles, but it's not really how the <laughs> game works. Um, and it can't be the name of an artist either, like Popcorn Hill or Jefferson Marklin or Berg or whatever Berg there is. Um, it has to be the actual song in the lyrics or in the title. So okay. um, there's a thing, though. You don't have the luxury of time, though. <laughs> you... <laughs> <laughs> You'll be surprised. Um, you have 15 seconds from the time I give you the word to sing it or use whatever voice capability you want. <laughs> okay. I'm sure that's possible for some people. Um, to sing it, rap, yodel it. Um, and they're in the song title or in the lyrics. Um, it's only three words, so it's not like double jeopardy or something. And it's really simple words. It's not like math equations or anything of that nature. So um, if you're ready, I'll give you the first word. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so <laughs> the first word is heart. Heart? Mm -hmm. Heart. Uh, <laughs> you're late. <laughs> You're like, have an open heart. You're like, have an open heart. I don't think it was yodel on the show before. That was awesome. Uh, I don't know how to yodel. You didn't yeah. ask to, but I love that you decided to give it a shot. Why not? <laughs> well, I think... <laughs> I can give you some answers some other guests have given when it came to this word. Um, okay. um gone with um they could have gone with Achy Breaky Heart by Billy Ray Cyrus. Ah. That's been around probably before I was even born. Um there's also um Don't Go Breaking My Heart by mm -hmm. 
want to say in sync. <laughs> I may be getting my boy man. Who's breaking my heart? That's Elton John. Oh, Elton John. Oh, um, I wouldn't if oh, I oh, tried. That, okay, okay. That that yeah. is a song. I'm getting it confused with <laughs> quit playing games with my heart. That is why, because there's a song called oh. Quit Playing Games with My Heart. So I got it confused. Right. Oh, um, but um, there's also um, My Heart Will Go On by Celine Dion, I believe. So you yeah, that's that, a hard one. You kind of went that route too. But no worries. <laughs> so the but no, next, I chose to yodel. <laughs> I know you chose to yodel, which was awesome. I'm so glad you chose to do that. Um, so the next word is words. Is is what? Words. Is what? Words. Words? Yep. Word W O R D. Yes. W W O R D word. Yes, but you heard that. I mean oh no, I, what's that? I don't know. Is my time up? I thought you heard me. Already? um well if it makes you feel better many people are absolutely stumped when it comes to this second word which is so simple because it's word w-o-r-d right w-o-r-d oh okay you could have went that route too um some of the answers guests have given is more than words by the band extreme i think i would rap word you know (laughs) Well, if you want, there's bird. Bird, bird is the word. If you want to rap that, I don't rap either. <laughs> uh, my rap would sound like a yodel, I'm afraid. <laughs> so, <laughs> the last word. I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be interested to see how you do this one, because it's a really simple word and it's an iconic song. If you think hard enough. Okay. Um, so the last word is believe. Believe? Mm-hmm. Mm, that's an important word. Yes, it is. Uh, <laughs> wait, I've got to yodel this. <laughs> believe in yourself. <laughs> you who believe in yourself. You who. <laughs> I'm sure just believe me. What is that? Is an actual song, right? I'm I'm trying to channel my music knowledge. I think so. <laughs> Where's the gong? I need a show. You know? I have a, okay, I have a timer. Um, a big hook and get her off there. <laughs> um, I mean, there's the song. Don't stop believing. Oh yeah. I, th- I honestly thought you were. Yeah, but you've go. got them all written down there. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I just I'm, I love music, and I find yeah. this game to be lots of fun because it pertains to words. <laughs> so, right. and it just it's funny how your brain absolutely turns against you in fifteen seconds. It, seems. it does. So, well, the only thing that stuck in my head was yodeling. So <laughs> that's what you got. <laughs> Well, that was a first because I I've mentioned it, but no one's ever tried to yodel before. So you just made like there history you know. by yodeling. Um, we could yodel more words if you want, but we're at the end of this very very yeah, awesome thank goodness. episode. <laughs> um, do you have oh, any phew. links? to share with my audience are your books going to turn into a movie on the moon give us the inside scoop as uh, to how my audience can get in touch with you yeah no movies uh on the horizon yet but if they want to uh, check out my books you can go to amazon um and look up nina bingham and you'll see my books there you'll see messages from metatron and then the newest one 10 archangels teach you how to live an inspired life um, and uh, you, I, I have a blog actually that has over 200 articles that I've written and it's got my media on there some, um, and it's got my podcast if you want to check out the Messages from Metatron podcast study group. And so that's at ninabingham.blogspot.com. And I think that's all. And thank you so much for this, for this wonderful opportunity. It was fun.
Of course, Nina. It was such a pleasure to have you on and to share your insight into not just Archangels, but just life in general and having an open heart and just embracing our differences. I just thank you so much. And I mm -hmm. truly, 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 truly am grateful for having you on and also for your yodeling. That's never been done before ever. So it's pretty <laughs> awesome and iconic in itself. Um, to all my <laughs> listeners, thank you for joining us on the latest episode episode of the words of art podcast if you enjoyed it if you yodel any of those words <laughs> um outside of this episode here are the ways to listen to it on the following platforms you can find us on facebook at the words of art podcast we're also on youtube and wherever you listen to your podcast apple spotify and google subscribe retweet share ratings or do ratings um whatever you can to support my podcast it makes a difference and if you are listening to it from the moon <laughs> let me know because i want intergalactic broadcasting to happen yes i'm i mention my inner nerd every single episode because again i love the differences of nerdum but until you are listening to it from the moon from all of us here at the words of art podcast thank you again for joining me nina bingham and sharing your awesome insight <laughs> And absolutely so honored to have the privilege of getting to know you through this episode. And um, again, I'm your host, Deion Sanchez. If you want to get in touch with me outside of the moon, um, here are the ways to do that as well. Um, you can find me on Twitter at HeartWarrior24 and on Instagram at HeartWarrior25. So stay healthy, stay awesome, embrace your differences. And until next time, bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.